Hello everyone, welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson four. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the principles of digital audio, what it means for something to be digital versus analog, how we use meters in a digital audio workstation. And we'll just talk a little bit about decibels and what those are. And last but not least, we will briefly touch on digital distortion and why it's something you want to try to avoid unless you're going for it for a creative purpose. And many of you have probably heard digital distortion before because I will be doing an example here where you can see what that sounds like. And my guess is you've heard it before in some of your favorite tracks or you've heard it before and you've really hated it. So you'll start to understand what that is, why it occurs, and why it can be very destructive when it comes to a digital audio file. So let's begin by explaining what a digital audio file is and what it isn't. So I'm gonna use this track as an example yet again. If you guys have been paying attention and watching the last couple of videos, you already know what this is. This is a pop track from 2014. And let's just say, for example, that I got this release on vinyl. So it came to my door, I picked it up, I was super stoked, I dropped it on my record player, dropped the needle, hit play, and I'm able to watch that needle go around the record and play it until it gets to the very end and it stops. So what's unique about that is the fact that when you have something that's on vinyl, the literal like file, the sound file itself, has been cut into that vinyl material, usually with a very fine pointed laser. And then when I put the needle on it, I'm able to play that track. That is something that's very physical and it exists in the real world. So you could take a vinyl, for example, and still in 300 years, if somebody can recognize that there's actually a groove there for sound, they could put a needle on and play it. That's one of the reasons why when they sent that probe up into space, they included a vinyl disc and I think they called it the sounds of earth and they tried to give simple instructions on how to play it because it's going to be very easy to play if for some reason a extraterrestrial species comes across that probe and uh, picks up on that vinyl disc. It's going to be really easy for them to play back. The technology is relatively simple. Digital audio, on the other hand, is all ones and zeros. Anytime you hear digital, it's going to be referring to uh, typically code, so computer code in one way or another. And when we look at a digital file like we're seeing here, always remember that this isn't physical, okay? This is just how the computer has taken that code and interpreted it. And so what you see in front of you is basically this x-axis is referring to time, so from the one bar mark up to around the 101st bar mark. And then on your y-axis up and down, you have the amplitude values. So at these points, it's going to be quieter than up here. And the computer does a really good job it's pretty much always going to be, you know, quote unquote accurate. But remember that there's nothing physical to this. It's all ones and zeros. It's millions of ones and zeros, but it still is nothing real. So when you take a CD, which is actually just holding digital information, and you click play on your CD player, what's happening is there's a process of that code being fed out and then being um, decoded by a codec or a codex, and then you're able to actually hear those ones and zeros so what we're sound is so abstract and when you get to the digital realm it becomes even more abstract so uh, it is all binary meaning again ones and zeros but there are many choices um, that when you export something when you are sampling it and then compressing it i'm referring to file compression here um, there are many many spots on this timeline of um time and of amplitude and there's another one which will which is frequency but we'll talk about that a little bit later and so the computer then has the ability to say okay we can't even zoom in that close here we're not even able to zoom in close enough maybe i'll show you guys another time where you can actually see the sampling points along the waveform but literally that's all it's doing it's plotting a point and then it's connecting the dots so it's like a game of connect the dots and then at the end of the day when it's all done this is what you see, digital audio. And so the next point about digital audio I want to make, which is different from the real world, 
is that in the realm of the computer, you need to always set minimums and maximums, right? If you're coding something, if you're writing a computer program, there kind of needs to be a start and an end, a top and a bottom. If there isn't, your code is going to run forever and it's going to crash your computer. I mean, those are the simplest viruses to make. You just make something that doesn't stop until it exhausts the computer's resources. Well, with digital audio, it's much the same way. There needs to be a lowest point and a highest point. Um, the highest point is very critical. And in digital audio, the highest point is actually zero. So really quickly, let's actually set this up so that we can um, see the large mixer here. Um, this is what we would refer to as a decibel full scale. Um, the full scale just basically means that there's a range. And like I said, the highest range here is a, a zero and the lowest is going to go down to uh, negative infinity. Again, it's not really negative infinity. Just think of that as being something so low that no matter how loud you crank up your um, audio interface or you know, no matter how many times you hit the button on your computer, you're going to get um, nothing. You're not going to hear any sound at all. And um, decibels themselves are referring to the intensity of sound. So we already talked a lot about relative loudness. And so when people use decibels and say, oh, 90 decibels is really loud, that's technically not correct because we're referring to just the intensity. So it's actually more intense right? If you sustain like serious hearing loss and then you go out to, I don't know, a test flight for um, some sort of new Black Worlds, uh, I don't know, military complex, whatever, a new aircraft that's being tested and you're at the test flight, if you had serious hearing loss, uh, it may not really sound that loud to you, but it's still just as intense. So I did want to make that clarification. So next time you're having one of those fun roundtable conversations, you can impress all your friends with that little fact. Um, but I wanna show you guys these meters and I'm gonna have to mute out the sound again just so we don't go through the copyright notice, but I want you to watch and see what happens. This is where I keep running into problems when I'm making these videos, so let's keep our fingers crossed that this is going to uh, play correctly. Here we go. Okay, so let's talk about what we're seeing here. I'm gonna stop it so I can concentrate, otherwise I'm gonna have Katy Perry going in the background that's gonna be kind of hard to concentrate to. So what you saw there was the level reaching all the way to the top, and at times it actually crossed that threshold and it went over the threshold. And with digital audio, when you go over that zero dB, when you go over that peak in the full scale, you're actually entering into the realm of digital distortion. And this is kind of a difficult thing to understand a lot of times because if you go over by a little bit in almost any digital audio workstation, you're really not going to notice it. You're not going to suddenly be like, oh, there's that grimy digital distortion sound, which we're going to get to in just a couple of minutes. But it is happening and it is occurring and it is something you kind of need to watch out for because if a lot of tracks, let's say we had like 20 tracks in here and they're all going over just a little bit. When we sum all those tracks together at the master and we're going crazy in the red, suddenly we are going to hear it. So it is something to be aware of. The other thing I wanted to mention about the audio file, about the ones and zeros is, I'm gonna get rid of those onset markers, about the ones and zeros is that these are permanent. These can't change. Okay, when the track is here at its highest peak, no matter what I do, that is still the peak of the sound. So if we have crossed the threshold and gone to digital distortion, you can't get that back. You can't pull away that from the file because again, it's all ones and zeros. I can turn down the relative loudness of it, but it's still going to sound exactly the same timbrely. And when I refer to timbre, I'm meaning kind of the essence of the sound. So what distinguishes, let's say, a violin from a tuba, even if you play them at exactly the same 
um, relative loudness, even if they're tuned exactly the same, they're always going to sound different. And we're always going to know the difference between a tuba and a violin. But if we play a tuba and we record it into a digital audio workstation, we record it way too loud and it clips. Even if I go back after the fact and try to turn it down, I can turn down the relative volume, but the clipping is still going to exist. And I'm going to just show that to you guys um, right now. I was going to show it to you with that particular pop track, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it with this because I know it, I can make a much more dramatic effect. So here's a loop that comes with um, one of the little extended collections here in Bitwig. I'm just going to turn this uh, down so that we get um, without it starting and stopping constantly. You're probably going to hear a click at the beginning and the end of the loop, but just don't worry about that for right now. So let's take a listen to this. I have it all the way down, so let's pull it up. All right, so we're back again at, um, we're at zero dB relative on the fader, and so it's telling me that it's peaking out here at negative 7.8 dB. And that means that I have basically 7.8 decibels of headroom before I start going over that zero mark. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna add a tool to this. an audio effect, effect, if you will. Man, I'm having all sorts of problems. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bump the amplitude on this. And I don't wanna play it back um, for you guys because it's probably going to blow your eardrums out, but I'm going to make this so that we are digitally distorting. So if I bump this guy up to like 36 dB, Let's take a look at this waveform first so you can see what it looks like. You can see the complexity of it. All right, here's what it looks like. You can see a pretty good amount of dynamic range. Um, I've noticed that with Bitwig, the uh, this sort of wave editor view here isn't that great compared to some other tools. So I might show you guys some of those tools later. But uh, for now, just kind of keep an idea of what that looks like. So I'm going to take this track here. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to bounce it to a new audio track. Select like post fader, don't worry about that for now. And now here is our new audio track that we've just created. Whoa, it's looking a little bit different. In fact, all the way through, we have peaked out. And this is digital distortion. When you go over zero, there is nowhere else for the file to go. And so it just cuts it off right there and you can see it in this visual display that we've gone over it hasn't done any kind of gradual um change to the audio signal it's just straight up cut it off all right so i'm gonna play us back the original again it should be solo so we should be good sorry you guys got a taste for digital distortion i now i feel like a jerk you just got your ears blasted i keep forgetting to to turn these off uh we'll listen to back the original and now you are gonna have an idea for what the new one sounds like here in a second. Let's mute it. Sorry, some of these uh, controls in Bitwig never like work properly. But I'm gonna solo this track now. Let's take a listen. That, my friends, is digital distortion. And like I mentioned before, we're not actually over zero right now. Don't wanna kill you. Um, but it doesn't matter we're still getting that sound. And that's what I mean by it being very destructive. No matter how low I turn the signal, I can never get it to sound like this. I'm never gonna be able to get it to sound like it did originally. And that is the fear, that is the big no-no of digital distortion, unless it's something you're going for. And even if it is something you're going for, there are safer alternatives to get it that won't be as destructive to the actual waveform itself. Okay, so just to recap what we talked about here, we talked about a digital audio file being all ones and zeros. And we talked about that and how it's different from something like a record, I'm going to go into more details on analog sound in our uh, next video. Then we talked about the metering scales that's used in a digital audio workstation like Bitwig and how this is referred to as a decibel relative full scale system or DBFS. 
and how zero is actually your highest value in this case and negative infinity uh, being your lowest, which you're not really going to be able to hear. And then we finished up by looking at what happens when you digitally distort something. So what happens when you go over that zero dB threshold and how the signal just truncates immediately and gets cut off and how there's no way we can save that. Um, and you can just see the difference in these waveforms. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I had to record it like 20 different times. So keep your fingers crossed that this one actually worked. And you will hear from me again in the next lesson.